Today's video topic is moral puzzle number three, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a similar logic uh, to the trolley problem, the famous trolley problem. Okay, so in this scenario, we have two Boeing 747s. So those are big passenger airplanes, all right? They're flying through the sky, and there's two mountains. And both of the planes are going to crash into one of the mountains. On the first plane, you have 100 passengers. On the second plane, you have 50 passengers. And you have a high-power bazooka. Maybe you'd need something even more powerful than a bazooka let's say, um, you know, a gigantic missile, and you can blow up uh, Mountain 1, or you can blow up Mountain 2. So in this case, I think most people are going to say, let's blow up Mountain 1, uh, we're saving the most lives that way, right? Uh, if we do nothing, then 150 people will die. If we blow up Mountain 1, then uh, 50 people will die, and if we blow up Mountain 2, then 100 people are going to die. So therefore, we should blow up Mountain one. That's the most logical option. Now in the second scenario, we have airplane one and airplane two, and they're heading directly towards each other. And if you shoot the missile at airplane one, you're going to kill 100 people. If you shoot the missile at airplane two, you're going to uh, kill 50 people. And if you don't fire it, then both planes will crash and 150 people will die. Now in this scenario, I think we're already going to start running into a lot of moral disparity. Logically speaking, it's the exact same scenario though. Now in the third scenario, we only have one plane, which is going to be plane one this time with 100 people. And on the mountain, there's uh, 50 hikers on the back side, and the plane is going to crash into the front side. So if the plane hits the mountain, none of the hikers will be killed. If we fire our big missile at the mountain and blow up the whole mountain, then all 50 hikers are going to be killed, but the 100 people on the plane will survive. So in this scenario, by default, the hikers are all going to survive and everyone in the plane is going to die. And if we intervene, then all the hikers will die and everyone on the plane will survive. Now in this scenario, I think we're going to see a very large moral disparity and I think there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to fire the missile launcher. So how do we even begin to logically start solving a problem like this? Well, the first thing is we have to make a separation between intentions and consequences, and we also have to make a separation between a closed philosophical model and reality. So let me give you a famous example. Let's say there's one healthy guy and four sick people. Is it right to steal the organs from the one healthy guy to give them to the four sick people and save four lives? Well, uh, in a closed philosophical model, I think you could justify that, but in reality, uh, what we do extends through society. There's two major moral differences when dealing with society versus a closed model. The first thing is in society you have corruption and the second thing is you have stupidity. So, for example, if our society allows people to be murdered, uh, if you can rationally justify it, well then, some guy who's totally selfish is going to say, I don't like my neighbor, you know, I'm, I'm going to figure out a way to rationalize killing him. Okay, so let's see. My neighbor makes a good amount of money and they don't give much to charity, so by killing my neighbor, I could take their money and give it to Africa and save 10 lives. In a society filled with corrupt and stupid people, a general principle of non-harm is going to be much more effective than a rationalized greater good. So now how do we objectively separate the intentions of trying to help as many people as possible versus trying to cause harm for the greater good? All we have to do is hold people accountable for their actions and not hold them accountable for their inaction. It's a completely unreasonable and impossibly unrealistic standard to hold people morally accountable for their inaction. Every moment at every day you could easily rationalize that someone could have been doing something to save someone else and therefore everyone would basically be a moral monster. I think this is a reasonable model and using this model we can now objectively solve scenario one, two, and three. In scenario one, 
uh, you have the two planes each flying towards a mountain and when you blow up the, uh, mountain one you're saving the hundred people if you did nothing everybody would have died so in this case your actions your individual actions cause nobody to die um, you simply saved a hundred people. We are killing people in plane two through inaction, not through action. Now in scenario two where you have the two planes flying towards each other, our individual actions are directly responsible for killing everybody in plane two. However, in this scenario, everybody would have died anyways if you didn't act. In this scenario, our intentions are no longer based on a principle of non-harm. In this case, our individual actions are directly causing harm, we're blowing up uh, plane two, and that's killing 50 people. So in scenario two, how do we balance intention with the result? Well, scenario two is fairly easy to solve because the results clearly outweigh the intentions. Because in scenario two, all 150 people are gonna die if uh, you do nothing. So whether you shoot down the plane or whether you don't shoot down the plane, they're gonna die either ways. So in this case, the result clearly matters much more. Now in scenario number three, we have the plane crashing into the mountain on one side and the hikers on the other. And in this case, the hikers were by default going to survive. And through your intervention, all the hikers would be killed, but the plane would survive and more people would come out alive. In scenario three, we are creating cataclysmal harm in order to prevent a greater harm. Once we start morally justifying killing innocent people for the greater good, then all hell is going to break loose. Selfish and corrupt people are going to abuse this principle to unimaginable proportions. And we already know where this leads us. So now using these logic models, we can easily solve the famous trolley problem. And for those of you who don't know it, you can easily find it on Google, but I'll, I'll explain it really quickly. You have a lever and uh, you have one of those train tracks that splits off into two directions. And the train is heading down track one and there's five people on track one and if you pull the lever it'll divert the train to track two and there's one person on track two so the idea is you pull the lever you save five people you kill one right and then the second part of the problem is when you push someone off um, a bridge let's say that you know there's five people on the track you push one person off the bridge and then the train hits that one guy and then the train stops so now it's very easy to solve using this logic. In scenario one, you should not pull the lever. And in scenario two, you should not push the guy. You are operating on the intention of sacrificing one person for the greater good. Your inaction is not what's causing them to die. And in the scenario of pushing the guy onto the train tracks, well, it's the exact same logic and it's even easier to solve this time because it's more emotionally clear. So why the moral disparity between people's answers on the train track problem? It's fairly obvious. If you have to push a button that, you know, grinds one person to death, or if you have to take a power sander and grind them to death with your own hands, well, they're going to feel a lot different. <laughs> it's the same thing as why do we care more about people right in front of us than we do about someone dying in a flood somewhere halfway across the world. In this situation, um, it's very hard to rationally reason because pushing someone onto a train tracks is a really emotionally intense experience. If you like this uh, moral puzzle, please share it. Uh, if you want to talk to me personally, you can add me on Facebook. My Facebook group is Logical Morality and uh, you can add me personally on Facebook through that group. Uh, and you can ask me anything you want, uh, bring any problems. I answer every uh, question, every email. Uh, my email is logicalmorality at gmail.com if you want to contact me that way too. You're welcome to. I prefer email. Email is my favorite method of communication. Um, and if you have a video request, uh, please leave the video request in the comments below. I know I missed a video request or two, uh, so just leave it again and I'll, and I'll get to doing it. I haven't been too good with keeping up the video requests, but I do do them all. So uh, take advantage of that policy because if my channel gets too big, then it'll be impossible.